India Global. India Global. Hello and welcome. Ready to join us on a trip that might be quite serendipitous? That's a big word. But it holds a clue to where we're going. The word serendipity, meaning a chance discovery of something wonderful, comes from the name Arab traders had for this country. Serendip. Let's head for Sri Lanka. The Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka is an island nation in Asia located off the southern coast of India in the Indian Ocean. With a tropical climate, two monsoons and convectional rains in summer, its rich flora and fauna have made Sri Lanka a global biodiversity hotspot. Its natural beauty, unique teardrop shape and location have earned it the sobriquet Pearl of the Indian Ocean. Traces of early Stone Age man, called the Belangoda Man, have been discovered on the island. Sri Lankan recorded history dates back nearly 3,000 years. Buddhism came to Sri Lanka in the 3rd century BC with the arrival of Prince Mahinda, the son of Emperor Ashoka. The country's strategic location made it an important port of call for Arab, Chinese and European merchants with the colonial powers, the Portuguese, the Dutch and the British soon following. Rubies, cinnamon, peacocks and ivory from Sri Lanka were carried by traders all the way to the royal courts of ancient Egypt. You just heard Katabera, the main drum used to accompany dances in the Candian tradition. Sinhalese, Sri Lankan Moors and Tamils are major strands of the population in Sri Lanka, with Sinhala the official language. It is also the national language along with Tamil, while English is commonly used as a link language. The capital, Sri Jayavadanapura Kote, is a suburb of the country's largest city and commercial capital, Colombo. <laughs> Melum Kavi, a folk song sung during harvesting. India and Sri Lanka have enjoyed close and friendly relations. Describing the bilateral ties between the two countries, India's High Commissioner to Sri Lanka, Y.K. Sinha, says, India is Sri Lanka's closest and in many ways our dearest neighbor. Our relationship is characterized by a rich legacy of civilizational, cultural, religious and linguistic interaction from time immemorial. This has provided a strong underpinning to our present ties. In recent years, the relationship has been marked by close contacts at the highest political level with growing trade and investment, cooperation in the fields of development, education, culture and defense. India has been at the forefront of efforts at reconstruction and rehabilitation in the island nation after a nearly three-decade-long armed conflict, says High Commissioner Sinha. India has always been in the forefront of helping the people of Sri Lanka. Even before the armed conflict came to an end, India took the initiative to send emergency relief assistance in November 2008 for the internally displaced persons who were coming out of the conflict zone. We set up an emergency field hospital able to provide emergency treatment to about 50,000 patients and conducted nearly 3,000 surgeries. A development package for Sri Lanka announced during the visit of His Excellency the President of Sri Lanka to India in 2010 included construction of 50,000 houses, rehabilitation of the Northern Railway Line, wreck removal and rehabilitation of the Kankesanthurai Harbour in Jaffna District and many other projects. A lion's share goes towards the housing projects. With a commitment of over $270 million for our housing project, this is the flagship project of our grant assistance and development cooperation program with Sri Lanka. We completed the pilot project for 1,000 houses in the northern province by July 2012 and have embarked on an ambitious second phase involving construction of 43,000 houses under an owner-driven model in partnership with four implementing agencies. India's efforts in helping to reconstruct the railway infrastructure has sometimes even been ahead of schedule. High Commissioner Sinha elaborates. We are providing a line of credit of $800 million to rehabilitate the railway infrastructure in the northern province, which has been destroyed during the years of conflict. Our project to restore the southern railway line damaged by the tsunami of December 2004 was completed ahead of schedule in April 2012. 
and it is our expectation to see the Yal Devi Express, which used to ply on this route, restart its services up to Jaffna this year, and also to connect with Salaimanar and on to a ferry service to Rameshwaram in India. Under a line of credit of $200 million, India's NTPC and Ceylon Electricity Board is to set up a joint venture power plant. Highlighting Indian aid on the academic front, High Commissioner Y.K. Sina says, We are looking at the establishment of vocational training centers in the northern province. We are also setting up the engineering and agriculture faculties of the University of Jaffna at Kilinochi. We are expanding the scholarship program for Sri Lankan students to pursue higher studies in India. And we are setting up centers of English language training in each of the nine provinces. We are also providing technical assistance for the National Action Plan for a trilingual Sri Lanka. Indian High Commissioner Y.K. Sinha underlines a robust trade and investment relationship between India and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is India's largest largest trading partner in South Asia. India, in turn, is Sri Lanka's largest trading partner globally. Bilateral trade in 2012 amounted to around $4 billion. The India-Sri Lanka free trade agreement has led to a manifold increase in overall bilateral trade. The shared Buddhist legacy is a cultural strand bringing the two peoples together. High Commissioner Y.K. Sina elaborates. In 2012, India and Sri Lanka commemorated the 2600th year of the attainment of Nirvana by Lord Buddha, the Sambhu Tattva Jayanti, through joint activities. These included the exposition of the sacred Kapilvastu relics in Sri Lanka during the 25 days of the exposition at 10 venues, approximately 3 million Sri Lankans, nearly 15% of the total population of the country, paid homage to the relics. Talking about the status of cultural ties, High Commissioner Sinha says, Cultural relations between India and Sri Lanka have traditionally been very close and friendly, reflecting the rich ethnic, cultural, religious and linguistic ties that predate recorded history. The Indian Cultural Centre in Colombo actively promotes awareness of Indian culture by offering classes in Indian music, dance, Hindi and yoga. Every year, cultural troops from both countries exchange visits. We are in the process of setting up a state-of-the-art cultural centre in Jaffna. We are involved in the restoration of the Tirukateswaram temple. We are also commemorated the 150th anniversary of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore by organising a number of joint activities. This year, we are going to commemorate the 158th birth anniversary of Anagarika Dharmapala, a great Buddhist revivalist whose field of activity extended in India as well as Sri Lanka. Beaches and water sports, natural reserves with the famed elephants, holy historical sites like Sigiriya, the fiery cuisine washed down with Ceylon tea, wondrous dances and, of course, cricket. Murali, Malinga, Mahela, Sri Lankan cricket has fans worldwide. Yes, discovering Sri Lanka can indeed be serendipitous. But it's time now to wrap up our visit. Before we go, here's a question for you. A great Indian poet laid the foundation stone of this college in Sri Lanka. What is its name and can you identify the poet? Send in your answer to indiajourneys 360 at gmail.com. The first three listeners sending in the correct answers will get a music CD from the AIR archives and a DVD from the Ministry of External Affairs. Congratulations, Anindu Saha from Kolkata, Raghav Tanaji from Hyderabad and Jasper Asir from Chennai for the right answer to a question on Spain. Eric Arthur Blair, more famously known by his pen name George Orwell, is the India-born English author who fought in the Spanish Civil War and wrote the book homage to Catalonia on his experiences. Until next time then, goodbye and travel safe.